night's air's smell has faded as the sun climbed behind the church that's guarded by the woods where I'll never go. One last scan around before I head to safety of my den. An early buzzard cries out from the trees above me as a flock of shimmering blue and green-headed ducks head towards the murky lake that's hidden between the rigid hills. Broken bottles and discarded bags of plastic form a track towards a group of houses where I'm unwanted. As the sun reaches my coarse fur, it changes its colour to that of the embers of an open fire. It's been a long and fruitless night as my eyes struggle to stay open in the, in the full light of the day. The dark and comfortable earth calls me through the twisted roots of the oak. I suddenly feel protected by the darkness as, as my tail reaches around to cover me. Birdsong is muffled and barely reaches down the hole but still reminds me of the world outside my den as it wakes up fast. Sometimes it seems like a song thrush sits at the entrance and sings at full voice down into the dark just to antagonise me as I sleep. No such annoyance from the songster today though. An hour of peace drifts by in seconds until a distant and ferocious call is waiting for me from far away. Despite its distance, it's still enough to get me up and send broken hearted shivers all over my suddenly trembling body. The bellowing sound of an unforgiving horn screams out. I've heard this call before and it haunts me. Like dark smoke on the horizon, the noise pollutes the sky. I stare out and my eyes become as wide as they've ever been. The rhythmic pounding of hoof, of hoof to the earth quarters the hedges as the horses follow a demanding order from the men cloaked in blood-red coats. They are still half filled away, but a second even more harrowing horn screeches out. The only thing I know to do is to run. I've been seen in their view, and now they won't be caught in their trap. As fast as my legs will take me, I run alongside the hedge as rabbits scurry down burrows and skylarks hastily take to the air in panic at my incoming presence. I'm not chasing them today, just running scared and searching for safety. The more than familiar sight of the woods is behind the end edges of the field as the calls from behind me get louder, but I'm not looking back. The drumming sound from the woodpecker is a welcome sound and takes me back to when, I, when a pair of used to nest in a hollow hole above the den. I spent hours listening to that neurotic noise as, as well as the chirping calls from the boisterous chicks. I scramble up a shallow rocky slope that takes me into the wood where I was born. It's the place where hares and rabbits seek refuge when storms come. A different type of storm is relentlessly chasing me as they bay for my blood. They corner the wood as the horses are left behind. Memories of play fighting with my siblings and great adventures into the unknown comfort me, but they are long gone, and all I'm left with is now is loneliness. Green, blue, and brown runs red as it bleeds through the wood. They shout and hurry until the red wall surrounds me in all directions. I dive into a smattering of brambles and, and wait silently, only for my panting to be heard. It's a moment of silence that scares me the most. Terrified, petrified and struggling to breathe as I wait their next move. Tally ho! is screamed out with menace as dogs scratch and claw at the edge of the brambles a few feet away. I take my chance as the red clo clothed humans arrive to bolt through the twisted scrub and into the old badger set. I've ended up in the hollow where I was born and I have first memories of sleeping tight with my siblings whilst returning for our mother to return. It still smells as it did, and that alone comforts me with the ferocious attack that's coming. It's not that long that my mother was taken away by the monsters in red, back when the sun began to dominate the day in late spring. My freedom is closing in like mechanical walls as my heart pounds out my chest. The sound and vibrations of spades slicing through the earth echo through the tunnels. I'm alone and surrounded as the dirt breaks away and light floods the hollow. It's the only chance I have, to have again to run. I pounce forward as the dogs bare their teeth and chew at the ends of my, of my tail and back leg. I twist and force myself free, 
As fast as I can run, I make it to the, out of the wood as my breathing falls out of control. Everything around me blurs as I scurry fast and low to the ground until I reach the middle of a barren field as a lone ash tree. I find sanctuary in the overgrown roots and close my eyes for a few precious seconds. I'm not going to ground this time. I peer out from within the roots as the yellow flowered field looks like a maze of hiding places. A pair of buzzards are ominously joined by a murder of crows as if they sense my desperation and vulnerability. The tiny wren arrives in contrast and scuttles around the tangled web of roots before performing its massive song from a broken fence post. Its final trill is screaming out as the little bird shivers and shakes its way to the elaborate ending at full volume. It was the first bird song I ever ever heard filtering down the den and it could be my last. The harrowing barking cries of the hounds call out again as the red mist of men on horseback trample through the field like poppies bleeding through an oil seed canvas. Before they get too close, I summon the entity to run again. The shouting, the barking and the raucous horns momentarily cease as I shut out all that surrounds me as all I can see is the end of a dusty track in front of me. Dust quivers and rises angrily as the horses tread the ground along with the stomping of shiny black boots. I'm finding it almost impossible to breathe as my legs go numb and crumple to the ground. With my final tail grasp of energy, I drag myself to the grassy verge which feels soft against my fur. They are closing in and there's nowhere left to run. My energy is exhausted and the fight is over. I have nothing left. Volcanic ash black and the colour of red death blur into one hazy colour as the dogs savagely bare their teeth and screeches at me like bearers of my end. An angelic voice screams out, INNOCENT! with more intensity than the barking dogs and the horns which can't compete with its overwhelming purpose. I'm being pulled in all directions as teeth sink into my back leg as well as a hand that drags me in. A chant of vermin, vermin breaks angrily but it is again met with def- a deafening INNOCENT as I'm forced for forcefully but in a caring way raised from the ground. For a brief moment I'm in the arms of a stranger, but against everything I know, I trust it. A sweet shouted shouted voice is mixed in with monstrous calls as it all begins to merge into a sound that takes away my thoughts completely. For a few precious minutes I'm held close to her chest as the blood curdling screams from the men and the violent barking fades away to almost nothingness as the sweet sound of a skylark resumes playing. I'm placed at the foot of a hedge and after staring back to look at my saviour with a sadness in my eyes, once again I run without looking back. I'm through the spiked hedge and away. I briefly sniff the air and sense which way to go. I reach a stream that's almost dry from a long season of sun. I know my way home from here. I lick de- delicately at the wound as the blood runs slowly down my leg until it reaches the divide where the rufous red merges with sooty black. My wound will heal over time, but my memory will be scarred for as long as I haunt the fields with a smashing of woodland. A thin band of mist provides a wall like a smoke screen as the sun twists its way through a tangled mass of clouds that do their best to stop the sun's escape. The familiar sight of the oak that's dressed in its vibrant summer coat is etched on the slope and brings me peace. There's no shadow cast as the sun is finally caught by the clouds. The light is being swallowed as I reach my sanctuary. I'm home and safe for another day as I'm welcomed back once again by the wren who's been joined by a blackbird who sings the day into night. I don't know who you are or why you've helped me. But now I'm running free and I'll never stop.